All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to Captain's Table. We have a very big group today. Uh, we expect over 100 people to attend. And um, it is um, with great pleasure that I introduce some of you that haven't been to Captain's Table before to our great supporters there. Many of these companies will uh, be very familiar to you. They're uh, the leaders in their particular uh, areas of supplying to the recruitment industry. Uh, Job Adder, of course, uh, leading recruitment management systems company, Ayers Group, who have joined us relatively recently and um, have some excellent solutions around uh, um, employee uh, management and support, and then A Positive with uh, Workforce Finance. They've got a bunch of solutions that um, work for all markets. Uh, William Buck, who uh, have done a lot of work in the recruitment industry now, and you get very high level professional advice from them. And then uh, Digipro, who uh, Michael Yarrow's company, who um, does some really good work as specialist outsourced bookkeepers to the uh, recruitment industry. So, um, you know, we've got a lot of knowledge uh, of a lot of recruitment companies that these, these uh, supporters all uh, interact with so many of you out there in the marketplace. And uh, in fact, um, we're going to bring them to present to you later in the year on, um, on all the information and ideas that they might have uh, for growing successful recruitment companies. So thank you very much to our supporters and thank you uh, for your representatives that are here today. Now, um, it is my great pleasure then to introduce Adele. Uh, many of you know Adele last. Adele has uh, been in the industry longer than me, I think, now 24 or so years, I think, Adele, is that right? Yeah, and, 25. Uh, yeah, and uh, has been in many roles. Um, she's been a recruiter. She's been a, a senior recruitment leader. She's done a lot of training of recruitment consultants and um, her current company is Career Lasso and uh, she might mention that as she goes through, but she's very passionate about helping recruitment companies and particularly uh, helping bring good people into the recruitment industry. So uh, Adele, thank you very much for uh, talking to us today on what is probably one of the most important topics going on right now. Um, we've got very low unemployment, as you know, um, we've got immigration is not happening at all people aren't moving. So it's this perfect storm of a candidate shortage, which is really when uh, great recruitment companies come to the forefront. So uh, we're really looking forward to hearing about your unique candidate sourcing strategies. We started with 20, it went to 27 and I think you're at 32 now, but uh, over to you Adele and thank you very much for joining us today. Lovely, thanks very much Tony and thanks for having me. Well Welcome everybody, feel free to leave cameras on. I love to see um, everybody's faces, even if you're muted, it just makes me feel like I'm not talking to a black screen. Um, so feel free to, to have cameras on and certainly pop any questions in the chat because I won't be able to see everyone on one screen. Um, and Tony will keep an eye on those for me and we will try and allow a bit of time at the end uh, for some questions as well. So um, I'll need to share screen now, Tony, unless you're gonna share the presentation at your end or am I doing that? Uh, yep, I'm sharing with you. You just have to uh, share your screen. I may, I'll stop sharing. There you yep. go. There we go. So hopefully, I'll just get that into presentation mode. Just let me know when you can see the presentation on the screen. Can see that? Yeah, I can see it on my end. Lovely. Thank you. Thanks for the thumbs up. Um, yes. Yeah, so welcome to this session called, um, uh, which started as 20 unique candidate sourcing strategies. Uh, Tony gave me that challenge a few months ago and said, um, or a few weeks ago and said, do you think, you know, you can come up with 20, but I want really unique ones. And I went, all right, let me see how I go. And uh, we checked in um, a little while ago and I said, listen, I'm up to 27. I'm really excited. Um, some of them are a tweak on something you will know, but some of them are really new and unique. Uh, and then I kept going at it because I just got so into this topic and um, and I know it's really needed by by every agency um, across Australia at the moment and I've ended up with 32 guys so um, so lots to cover today it kind of gives me I've worked out it's about a minute and a half 90 seconds per slide so as I said we're going to go through it pretty quick um, chuck your questions in the chat we'll try and catch that up at the end um, and uh, if there's any other suggestions maybe we can make a, a more comprehensive list together as a group um, even top my 32 would be great so 
welcome to the session and I'll jump straight in now. So just to give you an idea of who the session's for, the group, the room is full, as Tony said, um, close to 100 people have responded, uh, made up of consultants, billing and managers and team leaders, senior managers and certainly owners and um, business owners and directors are on the call as well, are on the, on the um, session as well, which is great to see. Just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Adele Last, I run a business called Career Lasso, as Tony mentioned, and I've been in the recruitment industry sometime uh, 25 years this year, and I now run a business where I source and train recruiters for our industry. So I am still recruiting myself. I'm just recruiting recruiters for your businesses. Um, so, um, so that's giving me my own challenges as well, uh, similar to how all of you are trying to source candidates for your market. So uh, many of these are some of my own unique, some I've researched from overseas and uh, other organisations and, and countries as well, as I said, um, that are doing different things. So on to the content. Um, the first one I've got is about creating candidate personas and um, these are really valuable. Some of you would already be doing this. Some of you this may be new to and, and the, top, the, the suggestions I'm making today are not industry specific. I've tried to keep them really broad. Some may work for your industry, some may not. So you may say, yeah, that one Adele doesn't quite fit for us. That's okay. Out of 32, I'd hope you at least pick up a couple today that are going to work. But candidate personas are really valuable tools to understand exactly who is the target candidate for the sectors that you work in. You're identifying who is the top talent and what do they look like. And it's more than just kind of going, this is the kind of ideal person for the job. We all do that. This is more about identifying key common traits, benchmarking the kind of best candidates for that jo those jobs, um, allowing you to use this tool to train your newbies, train new people coming into your business as to what they look for, what they should look for when they're looking for uh, candidates. Um, allows you to segment your candidate market, write targeted copy to that market, um, and even provide some marketing incentives um, to that market based on what you know about them. So you can see that little profile there it might even have, you know, where they hang out, what they do, um, you know, really a full demographic background. And you might have a couple of these for different key roles in your business, but starting out with a uh, persona um, or a profile about what the candidate looks like in your market is a really valuable way to help close and narrow it down for your candidate sourcing. The next one is about building networks um, with universities and educational institutions for new graduates. Um, I know some of you do that really well. Some organisations I'm aware of do that and have been doing that for some time. Others have talked about it. Others have kicked it around. Others have reached out once. Um, but it needs to be a really great source um, of, of channel of, of people, particularly if in your market you look for qualified people. Um, Tony mentioned migration is on hold, um, you know, we're not going to have um, a lot of new people coming in. So those people that are coming out of university, yes, they're going to be inexperienced, um, but we need to tap into that market. So look at building networks in your with your local um, area. Um, universities or educational institutions could be TAFEs, whatever type of um, level of uh, study the person needs to do that you're searching for, go and target those um, educational institutions. Job prep training for grads as well. In the vein of that, once you partner with educational institutions, you can usually offer this service to them. Some of you, again, may have done this. I do this regularly. So I go and give voluntarily, go and give uh, presentations to fourth year uni grads. So before they graduate in their fourth year, usually at the start of their fourth year, actually, we do it. Um, we do a lot of um, job prep training with them. So different subject um, coordinators will allow you to come in and do that. You could do it at high school level as well, although that's a really long game. Um, I tend to do it at university level um, about just building brand awareness for your brand, particularly if you're a specialisation. You know, if you are a specialization in engineering, you should be going to the universities and doing this job prep training for the unit for the engineering grads. If nothing else, you're putting your brand in front of them as early as possible in their career. Um, that brand awareness throughout their whole career is hugely valuable, as you all know. Um, if you are working in a particular niche. So costs you nothing but your time. You know all this information. Your recruiters know how to prep candidates. You know, it's the same advice that you're giving candidates when they're going for interviews, how to apply for jobs, what's put on their resume, how to conduct themselves. That's the content that I've created. It's pretty basic stuff for us, but, but grads love it. It's really valuable and it puts your brand in front of them. 
I don't know why this has got slide-ins. I didn't mean for it to have slide-ins, sorry. Um, I find that distracting. I meant to have it all come on at once. Um, uh, the next point is about recruiting on motivation. And I want to talk about this one um, as a tool for sourcing people because we are overlooking people um, when we're purely looking at skills and experience. We know that. We know our clients do that as well. But I want you to think about looking at other tools that measure things like motivation. A lot of psychometric tools do that. And a lot of you are using psychometric tools or have access to them. If you've got access to them and you're not utilizing them, this could be a great way to differentiate your candidates in the market as well, particularly to your clients. So um, look at using the psychometric uh, tool results with your candidate profiles going across to clients. It just gives that added layer um, and look at um, referring people based on their motivations you know put it make sure a lot of them have a motivation score in there and that's what you want to be getting clients to look at people's motivations and their and their drive and their um you know their their want to do that job or their yeah their motivation in that job so i think that's it needs to be something we really need to push as an industry as a whole and particularly to our clients but we all need to get better at it as well we are still caught in that have to have the skills have to have the experience what about somebody's intent I want you to think about that as a sourcing, you know, as a sourcing assessment. Um, train for the role in that same vein. We're going to have to get much better at looking at people who could do the role, not who've done the role. And again, I know what I'm saying is difficult. You've got the client saying that to you, but it starts with us. Our industry always influences down the line in that way. So start getting your clients or continue to get your clients to look at people who could be trained for the role. Some of your team, some of your own recruiters have this qualification. Certificate for in training and assessment is what it was called. Um, I think it's called something slightly different now. That's what it's called when I did it. Um, but a lot of you will have that and a lot of your recruiters have got that. What that means is actually you're qualified to create a training course where you could train people it's not a certified certified course. It's a training workshop that you could be creating that says, let me take this kind of candidate in the market and make them more attractive to this client by having some training. Okay? That's actually, this, this one here is the model of my business where I'm saying I'm going to find people who could make great room to be recruited. I'm going to and then I'm going to place them in your businesses. So this one's a powerful one that's good you can tell yourselves. As I said, many of you already have this course qualification to design something with very little cost just your time and then have a look at how you could train people to do the roles that you're trying to fill we have to get better as I said um, at looking at training people adapting people into roles looking at motivations rather than just skills and you have to pass that down the line to your clients as well really important there are government subsidies around this stuff um, uh, and short course um, grads are uh, worth having a look at as well. So it may not have to be a full qualification, um, could be these TAFE courses. Um, and as I said, check out some in your state, some government subsidies that might help you do that um, at, or even look at um, funding to develop the skills. There's lots of programs and they're different in each state. So you might want to check that out um, and find out what is available to you to be able to do this sort of thing. If you know there's a real shortage in an area, um, how are we going to get people through that? The next point I want to make about trying to source and attract good people is about looking at incentive, incentives um, that candidates really want. Um, I've listed some here, you know, vouchers, um, recommendations, um, access to courses or a resume health check. There's some stuff you can offer that's free. Something like a resume health check is something that we all do, we'll all do innately and we know we could give some really great feedback on any person's resume, but that's a really valuable source of information for most candidates. So think about are there services you've got, are there things you could offer your candidate market, your talent pool, that will, will drive them to you, will keep them coming back, will keep referring people to you as a result. Um, you may have to survey your market to find this out. I've just put some suggested ones there, but and it may differ for different, in, you know, different industries. Um, access to courses, you know, look at partnering with training providers that are providing the training, the qualified training that your candidates will. 
Okay, we used to do this when I was in the blue collar space. We used to partner with, um, with a forklift driving school um, and we had candidates that would apply for jobs. They want to be a forklift driver. They didn't have the license. So we would get them a discount to that school. We had a partnership, a referral partnership program um, that went on and the candidate then got the training. We could then place them in the job. The, the provider was happy they were getting this stream of candidates coming through. Could you set up those kind of arrangements? I know that's blue collar example, but um, could you set up those kind of arrangements with other educational institutions there's hundreds of courses out there hundreds that could be relevant for the kinds of roles that you're trying to place um, recommendations to different um, programs to different you know there's all sorts of employee programs that are out there depending on you know um, you can buy into them um, super funds have them sometimes where you've got discount you know restaurant vouchers and movie vouchers and all of these things think about opening that up to candidates you often will have those for your staff you could open up those services to candidates again and just looking at these incentives try to get them to keep coming back to you or and keep referring people through to you so again you might want to survey your own candidate base and find out what they do find value valuable um, I put cash in the picture there, but vouchers are sometimes a better option. Um, cash sometimes is a little, um, a little Adele, are you there? Hang. Hey, Adele. Have I we just uh, we just had you frozen for a second there on your Wi-Fi. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So can you just repeat that last little bit. So the slide I've got on screen now is a, a description about the top apps for Gen Z. So I'm suggesting that you hang out on the platforms where your candidates are. Um, and Gen Z is just one generation that I've, I've chosen here. You need to have a look at, again, once you set up your profiles and you segment your market, what am I dealing with? Are a lot of my candidates um, Gen Zs? Have I got millennials? Are they, am I still working with baby boomers? What, who, who are the kind of people that are in my candidate pool? And where are they looking? And just as an example with Gen Z, this has got a couple of Asian um, area countries on here as well. But if you look at UK and United States on the far right, those two are probably the closest to Australia in terms of our market. And if you look at these um, apps that, that people are on and looking at, you've got to ask yourself, how active are you? Are you, are you playing where they're playing? Are you hanging out where they're hanging out? Yeah. Discord's a really interesting one. If you haven't checked out Discord, I suggest you check that out as an option. I think we all know about TikTok and we don't think about it as a candidate sourcing tool, but that's where they're hanging out. That's where they're spending their spare time. So you want to get their attention. It could be nothing more than a quick TikTok. Um, and I know there's some really interesting ones out there. Um, so I'll leave that up to you and how crazy you want to get with those. But look, some of these, um, some of these apps are um, really, really new and they're changing all the time. So are you hanging out where your candidates are hanging out? The next one is about a, an active referral incentive scheme. And I've said, look at one that really works. Um, how many of you have got some sort of referral where you say to a candidate, if they refer someone else to you when you place them, they'll get $500 or $1,000 or, you know, those kind of referral schemes. That's what I'm talking about, where we say to a candidate, you refer a friend and if we place them, we'll give you something, right? Most of us have got them. Most of us never pay anything out on them. Fair call? I, we hardly, I hardly ever see them enacted. I hardly ever see agencies pay them out. I've had them in every company I've ever worked in. I can't even recall paying them out once, right? Paying it out once. Some of you might differ to that. You might have a really good network of candidates that refer that refer, but most parts, our referral schemes are not working, guys. So again, I encourage you to survey your market. Find out whether, the, whether your candidate base, start with your top five candidates who love you, that have been working with you for some time, your top five temps or contractors, and ask them why they work with you. Ask them what's good about dealing with your business. Ask them what would incentivize them to speak to a colleague of a similar skill set and refer them to you. What would it take? You might actually be interested to find out that it doesn't actually take money. Most people would do it because it's good service, because they received good service and they like the business. But look at what incentives you can provide that actually do mean something to that organisation, to that person, right? Could be, could be surprising to you. Um, the, only, the only really innovative one I've seen is um, that they 
I've seen one organisation pay for the association membership for that individual. So, for example, a CPA, um, you know, a, a, an accountant, they offer to pay for a, a year's worth of membership to CPA for them. You know, so it's something, again, it's not a cash. The cash part is too harsh and it's not working. So think about alternatives uh, of incentive programs that would really work. And as I said, you may have to survey. Think about holding a webinar um, or training that they want. I've talked about formal training programs, um, video digital training webinars, light touch stuff, 30, 40 minutes, you know, lunch and learn type stuff. Some of you do that, but we tend to focus it on our clients. We focus a lot of this stuff on our clients and not much on the candidates. Think about what the candidates want. Again, ask them what they want um, and then deliver what they want in your market, in your industry, in your sector. What is it that candidates are craving for? It could be generic stuff about doing a video interview. One of the, one of the really popular ones that, that I found is, is a session that I do on that, which is how, training them how to do a video interview better. Okay, you guys all know that. You know all that information. You know the difference between looking at the person on the screen and looking at the camera. You understand all of that. Uh, you understand about lighting and about sound and connection and all of these things and a million other tips that they don't know. So hold a webinar around that and, and attract people in. It gives you a great talking point, a great tool to market to people uh, that's other than just we have jobs, we have jobs. You want to try and engage with them outside of just you know, the job board situation. I want you to think about your consultant KPIs as well um, and look at putting in place consultant KPIs that measure and track candidate contact activity and reward for it. KPIs uh, have the greatest value when they reward the behaviours we're trying to encourage. And traditionally, they only encourage placements, right? They're paid only on placements. Sometimes we've got client visits in there and interviews and, um, you know, lots of other activities that we think are relevant for the end game of the placement. But if you really want your consultants to focus on something, if it's really important that they build talent pools, if it's really important that they're talking to candidates all the time, it's important for client, with, with clients as well, I know, but you've got to then put it front and centre for them. You've got to put a KPI around it. You've got to track it. And I'm saying reward for it as well. It is as important an activity. We always knew that we need clients and candidates. We know that, but it's more important right now, as we all know, because the candidates are so scarce. If you are not spending time, as much time nurturing your candidate relationships, that's where you're going to fail in this equation. We spend a lot of time focused on the client relationship. Candidate relationship management is, is you know, the new term. Um, you need to really market to your candidates like you do to your clients. Again, this is where I think we fail. We spend a lot of time and money on our marketing, our marketing dollar to the client, not as much to the candidate. And I'm talking about marketing to them. I'm not just talking about attracting and putting an ad up and hoping they apply or, um, you know, contacting them. I'm not talking about basic stuff. I'm talking about sophisticated marketing activity that puts valuable data to valuable to them the data in front of them at the right time. That's attracting and pulling them in all the time. I put some names up there of organisations of tools that do this. There's a few mentioned there. Um, speak to your um, your database provider. I know Job Adder's on the call. Um, maybe Job Adder can tell us. Uh, I know they've probably got multiple options uh, through Job Adder because they do. They have fantastic um, options to choose from to be able to set up marketing activity that permanently is engaging your candidates. Okay, so if you're with Job Adder, talk to them today. As I said, they're on the call. Connect with them and find out. But talk to your provider about what tools they've got that will help you connect with candidates like your clients. This next one, it's so, so simple. Social media strategy. I say this and everyone just kind of goes, yeah, okay, that's obvious. Honestly, who has a very structured and dedicated social media strategy with ROIs listed and who actually tracks and measures it. We've all gotten used to posting on. Yep, thanks, Vanessa. <laughs> I would hope you guys do, um, <laughs> given your market. But, you know, you, you need to make sure that you actually have this like you would have your business strategy and your sales strategy. Your social media strategy ties into that and it needs to be rock solid. 
and engage services of, a, of an expert if you don't have the expertise in this area, okay? It's no longer a case of we need, we know we need to post and we need to show such and such as birthday and this person's anniversary. I keep, I still see so much um, just random posting going on and, and you can see there's no strategy because I watch and I follow lots of organisations to see if there's a pattern or a strategy there. There could be, could be a strategy in the back I don't know about, but it looks really random um, and I wonder whether it's making any, making any return. So you want a really structured social media strategy to your target market. Who is my target market? What am I trying to say to them? What message do I want to send? Exactly like you would if you were trying to sell a product. Okay, if you've got a, if you're selling a breakfast cereal and you go to an ad agency, that's exactly what they say. Who's the, who's the target client for this? Who's the target customer for your breakfast cereal? You know, what's their lifestyle? What's their age? What's their demographic? Oh, did somebody speak then? Nope. Um, what's their demographic? What do they, where do they, you know, what, what do you want to say to them? And then they build an ad campaign for you based on that. And that's the exact same thing with social media. You're building an ad campaign, a marketing strategy. It just happens to be delivered on social channels, but you're building a marketing strategy talking to the candidate. But who are they? You need to know who the candidate is. I want you also to review your old, I'm saying old and complicated application processes. Already in the States, I, I, um, a, a large number, I haven't got the percentage, oh, I've lost that. It's, it's not huge, but it's like 37%. Um, I'll pull up that article and I've forgotten to do that. I meant to have that handy. Um, it was around 37% in the States of, of corporate organisations are now no longer asking people to apply with a resume. Resumes are starting to become redundant, okay? They're asking them to go through other ways of applying. They're asking them to do, they, they gamify things or they have different application processes. They have some psychometric testing up front instead of the resume, okay? So then they've done away with it. They don't even have it as part of the process. So I want you to think about how that might work for your business. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe your clients aren't used to that and you'll need to, it's a whole campaign around having to educate the client. But what does your process look like to your candidate? Please go and do that yourself on your own business. Go to go outside your business and apply to one of your jobs and see how painful that is. See how old and convoluted and complicated the process is. Hopefully it's not. But are you asking them to upload their resume and then sit and wait? Think about how could you make that more engaging up front? Candidates don't want to just apply and, and wait in this market. Okay, good candidates. So I'm not just talking about anybody. I'm talking about, imagine you've got a job you've got to fill today. Have a look at, you've all got a job right now you need to fill. The ideal candidate is interested in that job and he's knocking on the door. And you're saying, okay, yep, yeah, go and take a seat. I'll be with you in a minute, right? That's not how we would treat them if they were literally knocking on the door, okay? We go and answer the door and go, come on in. Tell me about yourself. What's happening, you know? Have a conversation. So I want you to review your old complicated processes because they are still old and complicated. Um, I'm yet to see many organisations with a really different or sophisticated process yet. So have a look at some of the overseas stuff. I'll pull that article out too so that I can verify my um, statistical data quote. Um, check your employer brand versus your reputation. And I've got a little description about the difference there. So brand is what you say and how you behave. So that's what's on your website. And your reputation is what others say about you based on shared perceptions. That's done now through social media, social proof about you and your organisation, okay? So you need to check this. You need to check what your, what your brand reputation is. That's one thing we usually control. And so we know what that says. Does the reputation match the brand in the marketplace? Again, how are you going to find this out? You're going to have to ask candidates, ask clients. You're going to have to be from out, outside the organisation to understand this. And why is this important in sourcing? We know this now, guys. People are checking you out before they're applying. Ask your candidates this. Most candidates are doing this now. They're checking out the recruitment agency and the recruiter before they apply. Okay, so do it for your brand. And I've said also for your consultants. What is your consultant's brand profile? and their reputation in the market, okay? Much harder to control if you've got a big team, you've got lots of people, lots of moving parts, I get that. But while they're in your employ, you need to know this. You need to know how they're perceived in the market. 
And again, then utilize that to your own advantage. Maybe there's candidates that would be more attracted to that, attracted to that style of consultant and direct those candidates that way. The candidate that loves to chat and give out, the consultant that loves to chat and give out lots of free advice, direct those general inquiries through that person. You know, somebody who might want to just be more direct, you know, deal with candidates in that market or what have you. You know, think about who could be working which candidate group better so that they're getting better engagement with the candidate as well. But check your brand, check your reputation. This is just a little general one. I haven't got a specific um, example here because there's lots of them. Um, give more than you receive. And what I mean by that in this market is you need to be generous. You need to be generous with your time and resources. You need to be generous with what you can provide to the candidate as part of the process. I'm training new recruits, as I mentioned earlier, into this industry. And one of the things I talk to them about is there's a point in the process, in, a, in any recruitment process, when we go from assessment to coach. You guys who are experienced, you'll know what I'm talking about here. You go from assessing the candidate to once you've decided the candidate's right, you're putting them to your client. Now your job is to coach them to get the job. Now your job is to be their agent, to be on their side. Okay. I want you to think about bringing that equation earlier. That might be enough of the give. So stop assessing so hard at the start and start looking at how could I help this person how can I coach this person through the process? Some people are not worth your time. I get that. You have to say, no, thank you. I can't assist you and you, you leave those. But I want you to think about turning the coach on earlier in the process. So give more than you receive. Persistence is con uh, persistence in contact um, is key. And I've said text is, re is really important. Um, this was in an um, article that Greg Savage posted this week, in fact, um, about, um, no, sorry, it wasn't Greg, it was on LinkedIn, about contacting uh, candidates who um, have either applied or could be suitable for a job. In the actual case, the article was about people who applied for a job. Now, most of us would expect that if somebody's applied for the job, then I call them and they're in, then they must be interested. So they'll either take my call or return my call. Yeah, fair assumption. <laughs> in today's market, no. In today's market, you have to chase the candidate now. Okay, you need to chase them down and you may need to do it many more times than you realise. This article on LinkedIn specifically talked about it being up to 10 times. I'll tell you what, I have not chased a candidate 10 times. I don't know about any of you. I've never tried to contact a candidate 10 times. Maybe three at best. I reckon I'd be fair to, and that would be when I'm really, really desperate. Okay. I don't know if any of you want to admit the same. We don't, we're not persistent about it. But this is the thing that's going on in the market now. People are applying for lots of jobs. Um, they're sought after. They know that. It's almost a little bit of a dance. So the same way we would be persistent with a client. Remember, I'm saying the same strategies you use for your clients now are actually applying for your candidates. That's why this market for recruiters who haven't been in the industry more than five years, this feels odd, this market, because you haven't seen the cycle. Those of us that have been around a long time, we've been in a candidate short market before, but, we've, but, but now it's even harder. Now the market is even worse than it was in terms of, you know, holding us at bay. You know, I'll pick and choose and I'll call you when I want to call you. Okay, so the article was really interesting because it didn't talk about chasing them. It didn't talk about saying, I'm calling out the job, I'm calling out the job, I'm calling out the job 10 times. It was a, 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 a series of conversations that you're having with someone's answering machine, actually. Um, sounds strange, I know. But it was interesting to see that, that really this works, you know, and, and maybe for more senior candidates, they wanted to see how kind of persistent the recruiter was and they were calling back the ones that were being more persistent. I'm saying maybe text as well. If you're like me, I'm old school, I pick up the phone every time. Candidates don't like me phoning. They want me to text now. So if you haven't already got onto that, um, think about switching up your text um, bulk pack you're buying and use your database and text candidates. Hey, I'm going to call you at 3 o'clock, is that all right? Or I want to chat with you a bit and they'll chat with you on text. Text is now a conversation tool, not a confirmation of I'm running late, which is what, you know, as I said, I'm a bit old school. That's what I see it as. The next one I want to mention as a trainer of good quality recruitment processes, I want to say to you all, you need to write more compelling adverts. And if you struggle with this in your team or you know your teams do, give me a call. I want to help you with that. 
Um, I want people to write better ads. I see it all too often. The adverts we are writing are, I'm sorry, shit boring. They're the same ads we've been writing for 20 years, guys. The same stuff regurgitated. Yes, there's a formula. I train the trainees on the formula. The formula is just there as a guide, but it's got to be compelling. Compelling means it moves people. It makes people get up off their chair, moves their emotion, okay? Or it's clever or it's witty or it makes them think. I've just put an example of an old um, an old one up there. You guys might have seen that, you know, problem solvers want to call us on this number and you've got to solve the problem to get the number. Um, so obviously you have to be a good problem solver if you're going to apply for the job. But I want to see more compelling ad adverts, right? It's not a sourcing strategy, but if you're going to go out and advertise for a job, you might as well spend your money wisely. And I'm not seeing that enough. I'm still seeing the same ads. I'm seeing PDs on, on ads. You know, an advert is not, a, is not the position description. It should not have the position description on it at all. It's supposed to be an ad that draws people in. It's a piece of marketing. Um, try and bring some fun into this. You know, we are so conservative sometimes as an industry. We are so boring and, and stayed around the way we do things. Again, that whole idea that someone has to apply with a resume. Right? You can find out everything you need to know about a candidate before you've even picked up the phone. We know that. What the hell is the resume going to tell us now? Right? Think about this. Think about how can I engage with people differently, make it interesting, make it fun. There's companies in overseas doing um, uh, skills challenges and personality tests, this gamification idea that it's about engaging somebody in a bit of fun, in a bit of frivolity at the start to bring them in, to know your brand and then to start maybe looking at the jobs you've got on or to open a conversation with you to say, hey, next time I'm looking or I might be I have my eye on the market. Okay? So so just think about bringing some fun. I want, I want you to really think about how you could challenge, put this to your team. This is a great creative innovation thought challenge. Get your team together, um, you know, and say when they're back in the office, ideally, but, you know, maybe do it as a Zoom call. Right, we're going to brainstorm. No idea is crazy. Let's brainstorm. How could we make it fun for a candidate to apply and just see what they come up with? You might really be surprised. This was a really cool one that I love and I don't see anyone really doing this well. Um, think about using influencers like products do on social media. Think about this, right? A product wants to launch on social media. Um, if it's a product for mums, they find a bunch of mums and they, chuck, they send them out the product, they get them to test it and they do a post about whether they like it or don't like it, right? They're called influencers. It's a job. We know about this. We know about it for products. Why can't we have recruitment influencers? Why can't you have people that are known in the industries you're working in road test your service, road test what it's like to deal with you and give a critique on their social media? Think about that. Think about a group of influencers for services rather than products. I'd love to see this. I'd love to see who... Um, <laughs> Pat's talking to us. All right. Um, I want you to have a look at your own website as well and think about making it a lot more candidate focused. Again, I still see agency websites with client and candidates split down the screen and, you know, um, and you send the candidates off here and the clients off here. Um, and all you do when you get to the candidate page is it's, a, it's job adverts. And yes, traditionally, that's what candidates want to see. They want to see what jobs we've got on. I know that. But think about making it an experience. Again, if you only had one client, if you only, if candidates were your only client, you didn't have to worry about getting clients. So imagine all the clients are coming in the door, which we've kind of got now. We've got lots of clients. What would your website look if you were just building it for candidates? Challenge yourself on that thought. Have a think about, go back and look at it now and go, does it really appeal to me? I think for most agencies, it doesn't. And maybe there's a different one. Maybe there's a different site you have where you direct candidates. Talk to your IT providers about how to set that up, okay? But think about making it really focused um, on your candidates um, and what they want to see and what they want to say. The next one um, is outsourced talent uh, mapping. And I know we've got, um, we've got Tony's uh, referral partner on the call today with us uh, who provide resources to outsourced resourcing, which it could include things like talent mapping. So you can give this group 
a, a market, an area, and they will come back to you with all of the key players in that market. They will come back to you with names and emails and details that you need to know. We think about this again for clients. These guys can do it for candidates too. Go and find me, all of the cybersecurity people who've only worked in um, the mining industry. You know, get really specific about it and give it to these organ these organisations, um, and they'll be able to help you do that. And again, takes it takes that away from your consultants doing a lot of that grunt work. What they'll get back is a short list they can start working through and start looking people up on LinkedIn, a much more targeted list. Okay, so think about outsourcing that sort of the function as well. I'm running out of time. I'm going to keep moving fast. Um, advertising on social media. Yes, we know that a lot of people are advertising on social media. You'll use Facebook. Facebook, you'll use potentially, um, you know, I've mentioned TikTok. Um, I want to see some more interesting adverts, people. Again, man, we're boring. You know, we thought we were so cool and we got, um, you know, these video tools and, and we talked straight down the camera and we go, hi, I've got a job I want to talk to you about today. And, da, 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 da. and we thought we were so clever when we were doing that. And we were two years ago, maybe four years ago. That was a great way to do a different kind of ad, right? A video ad where you're talking down the barrel of the camera. Candidates want much more than that now much more than that video content is so sophisticated now it needs it needs video um, and audio it needs music it needs lighting right you may look at partnering with a videographer it's not expensive and do particularly for the same kind of roles you're recruiting for or it's in your same market think about what video content you can create that's cool and fun and think about platforms like TikTok, TikTok, and some of those others as i've mentioned earlier um but yeah speaking down the barrel of the camera you know in uh, job ads you know it's done now everyone's done it we've got to do something more exciting so i want you to think about that agency owners on the call will be very glad to see this one from me your database is a gold mine and again i train people on this all the time i i truly truly believe it i go into literally hundreds of different recruitment agencies and I ask them about their greatest challenges and I ask them about what they've done to fix it and I've never seen so far I've only been in business for 18 months but I've spoken to lots and lots of companies already and so far I'm yet to see a business that I think is really making the best use of their database right there are always pockets that are untapped there is always areas they've let go there is that, that no one's ever got it fully tidied up and ready to go so there are some great tools that help you with that again speak to the guys at job adder i know there's some great tools and add-ons they've got but your database is a gold mine so when i'm saying candidate sourcing and looking outwards i'm also saying it's right inside your building already it's already in your network what you need, the candidates you need are already there. And I think we could all hand on heart say, uh, we know that there are candidates that we haven't kept in good contact with. So mine that database, make that a function, give that to somebody um, as a job. Now's a great time to be doing that. Um, you know, hire somebody dedicated to do that. Um, your clients have employees that they wanna move on. That can be a great source. And I'm not just talking about offering outplacement. I'm not just saying go to your clients and say, we do outplacement service. I'm talking about strategic conversations with clients who are in your market. And those of you in specializations will know what I'm talking about. The same people tend to move around. So have conversations with your clients about the struggles you're having with other clients. It's okay. It's okay to tell them that. This is where it's really difficult. This is a skill set I would really want. They may have people that they want to move on for different reasons it may be a much more you know it's, it's it's sophisticated and it's you've got to be very strategic about it this one you've got to be careful of but it's more than just that outsource not just going around and offering outsource out placement i'm talking about sophisticated conversations with your clients about people they may strategically want to move on from their business these are some of the other just finishing up some of the other cool ones i found from overseas um, blind recruiting and um, interviewing tools that allow you to um, conduct a blind interview a blind interview mean um, you can't tell the person's um, race gender um, nationality um, you're doing an interview um, essentially their face and their voice is modified uh, there's some great tools out there that do this sort of stuff for you already think about um, what kind of outcomes you might get differently if you're finding that well the candidates are there but you know we keep they're not good enough they're not good enough i'd say some biases are coming in right we all have those unconscious biases think about doing something that would make it a little blinder for you a bit more blind and see whether do an exercise with your recruiters you know take off strip off details and give them a, a, a d 
um, identify a resume and see who they'd pick out if they didn't know the name and they didn't know the nationality and they didn't know where the person lived, they didn't know anything about them. Um, do it as an exercise. You might be surprised and it is bias going on. So I thought these kind of things were really cool to think about um, as a way of us broadening our mind, broadening our client's mind as well. So I want you to think about one touch application for mobile. We now know more than 70% of people are job hunting and applying via their mobile device. If your process, again, if your application process on a mobile phone is, is complicated, go here, go there, click, click, click. I looked at one the other day and without an exaggeration, it was seven steps. It was seven things I had to click on before I could apply for the job. I gave up. I gave up, right? I was I was doing it for a client as an exercise. I was like, this is too hard. So one touch might be ambitious. I get that. Might be, a, you know, maybe more than one, but, you know, six and seven is way too many. So go back and have a look at your own application process from a mobile phone. Make sure it's sophisticated. Speak to an expert if you need to upgrade that. Um, this is an interesting one. Try this for a period of time or a group of people or with a particular sector. Try connecting with every application. There's not that many now, now, right? So don't tell me, oh, there's too many. I can't, I haven't got time for this, right? Put an ad out and commit to yourself for, for that ad, I'm going to call every candidate and have a conversation. Just try it. Just try it. I reckon you'll be surprised. There'll be some gold in there that you will have overlooked. We get very good as recruiters making snap decisions, assessing, moving on. Most of you are reading a resume in about seven to 10 seconds. You're making a decision about whether you want to open it and ring the person. We're doing it really fast. And the faster and better we've got at it, the more we're perhaps overlooking people. So I'm trying to tell you part of your sourcing strategy may be that you've already got the applicants you need. You're just overlooking them. So I want you to go through and try it. Just try it and connect with every person that applies right now, particularly while it's quieter and there's less people applying. Um, think about offering career planning discussions to candidates. This is, again, a really valuable tool that we have that we don't value. We think, oh, you know, yeah, we have those conversations all the time. We tell somebody you should try this or have you done that in your career or you need more training here. But that info is really valuable, guys. You know your market. You know what the clients want in that market. Survey your clients and come out with that report. Tell candidates, this is what people are looking for in the market at the moment. Well, this is what they want to see. This is what they want to know. And vice versa to your client, all right? We all know about the working from home dilemma we've got now with clients not wanting to give uh, working from home options and candidates demanding it. Um, if this is a kind of meet a recruiter um, thing that happened uh, in our industry. It's not happening at the moment, of course, with COVID, but had been happening a few years ago where people could book in to just have a um, no obligation conversation with a recruiter. Think about offering that within your own industry, within your own business, okay? Even within your clients' businesses, that might be a great service for them as well. Social proof yourself, um, build trust. Go and check yourself out. This is the equivalent of Google searching your name. Everyone done that? You Google searched your own name. You haven't done that. You need to go do that. But you need to search your own business and see what social proof is about you. Check out Glassdoor. Check out what people are saying in forums. Check out your business for that reputation check. Um, there are great tools that do this. There are Google Analytics that check some of this. Again, um, engage with a marketing expert if you need to um, to get some of this data, but social check and social proof yourself. Um, this one I thought was cool. Showcase your good hires in more detail. So once you place them, of course. Um, so once you've found somebody and you've placed them, it's a bit like a testimonial. I want you to think about using video. Think about recording a video interview with that candidate about how the experience went and how their new job's going and what they like about you and the industry etc etc there's a million questions you can ask um, and then you can use that video candidates again this social proof element they want to see someone's gone first so that could be a really cool way to show people um, the kinds of levels of roles that you're recruiting or the kinds of industries that you're working in as well um, Outbound chatbot, there's some really cool sophisticated tools to do with outbound chatting uh, that connects with people once they connect um, with you on your site. So they might go in and do a browse, they might click through a LinkedIn ad or something that you've got. Um, you can have tools that watch that and then they connect with that person um, and say, how can I help you or what can I do? Or better still pick up the phone. There's really sophisticated tools in this, in this space, not in the recruitment market, but you can apply it here. Um, I've 
I've been subject to it myself. I'm, I was looking and search, researching something the other day on my phone um, late at night, didn't think anything about it, closed it down. And then the next morning I had a call from an uh, organisation saying, hey, we saw you looking um, on our site. Is there something we can help you with? We saw you specifically went to this page. Let me tell you, there's actually a special on that. And I bought because the person called me. And I was shopping, okay? So there's some really cool, sophisticated stuff which could definitely draw candidates in and catch them while they're doing the browsing part. And my very final one, oh gosh, I'm almost over time. Um, I didn't allow much time for, for questions, but um, create a sourcing strategy. That's my final, final tip for you. Whatever you do out of all of these things, I've given you 32 of them, pick one, pick two, pick 10, but sit down today, hang up from this call and go, right, I'm going to book a meeting with those that I need to, and we are going to create a strategy. Because if you have the strategy and you focus on it, it will grow. It's not going to be good enough to just sit there and keep going, oh, God, this market, oh, God, this market. I'm having that conversation with agency owners every day. Stop saying this market, this market, start doing something about it. Adopt one of these ones. Adopt the craziest one that you think won't work that I've suggested today and give it a try. And I'd love to hear your feedback as well, um, whether it worked or not. So thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope that you did get um, a couple of uh, gold nuggets out of today. I have got five more minutes if anybody wants to um, pop any questions in the chat um, or unmute and ask directly. Um, I really appreciate your, your time and attention and I look forward to catching up with all of you soon. Questions, please, anybody? Comments? Anything Adele missed? There was 30 something there, Adele. It was 32. <laughs> 32, very good. Any, uh, anything else? Uh, feedback uh, in the chat, uh, anybody, everybody? Anyone want to unmute and um, even comment on some of the strategies? Adele, I've got okay. one quick one while we're waiting for someone to unmute. Yeah. Um, yes, oh, you mentioned them getting back to every candidate. I know for a fact big companies are terrible at that still. Even in a candidate short market, they're horrible. Mm -hmm. um, they're, you know, the ones that are trying to recruit themselves, they don't get back to anyone. They're just nothing. It's just, it's just dead air completely. And so many companies are doing themselves a disservice by not engaging with people that are uh, really good possible candidates for them. And that's probably a big benefit of mm -hmm. a recruitment company. Um, that um, recruitment companies can ta talent manage and, and really look after candidates. Well, absolutely. I mean, that's our real value, guys. You know, that's that's where we can't get replaced by by the bots. You know, uh, the recruitment industry, as we know, has been you know in danger of becoming redundant for the last twenty years. The whole time I've been in the industry, I've been told that. But that's the kind of stuff that makes the big difference. That's the kind of stuff where you where you can never be replaced is that connection, is that building that network with good people before they're ready to move or before they've even thought about moving. But yeah, Tony's right. Big companies, um, still lots of companies still not great at it, to be honest. And right now in the market, it's about the only time you could do it. In a, in a really buoyant market where there's lots of applications, it's hard to say that. I can't say to you, go and call back 200 people for one job. But right now, I reckon we're getting twos and threes, you know, if you're getting 10 people for a job. That's not going to take you that long sit and call those 10 people and have a chat you might be surprised there could be gold in there that you overlooked no very good all right um adele can you see um lisa's comment there and uh maybe someone can um sell her a contractor <laughs> yeah there's a job ad guys <laughs> um She's got, uh, she's got her contact details on there, so that's good. Um, yes, the presentation will be made available. So the content of the slides will be made available as well as the recording that Tony's made today. And if you do want to speak to me, um, I've got my, on the last page there, I've got my um, contact details. So my direct mobile and my email address is there if anybody does want to reach out to me specifically about any of, uh, any of the services that I could help with as well. Yeah, all right. We might have time for one more question. Did I see you there, Rory? Wanted to ask something? No. Anyone want to unmute and ask? No. Me? No, I'm okay. I was um, I was uh, no, I'm okay. I'm good. Thank you. Right. I actually did want to ask. It's Gabby here. Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Um. So, I mean, we all traditionally go to uh, LinkedIn and seek for trying to find candidates. Like what I'd be interested to see um, how other avenues are working. Like you talked about TikTok, but are there 
are there other, you know, what are other people using and has TikTok actually worked? Well, it's about finding out again, as I said, where your candidates are, um, where the candidates are hanging, you know. So TikTok, um, you know, for your market, I know Gabby might actually be relevant because it's the kind of demographic in a lot of cases, um, you know, at a particular age group, but it might not be for others. So I think first start by finding out which one is relevant for, find out what are the options and find out which ones are relevant for your market. Ask your candidates, ask the candidates you're already placing. What social, you know, do it as a bit of a survey. Um, you know, where do you where do you spend some of your time? Where do you look? You're not trying to you're not trying to put job ads on TikTok. So so go yeah. and check it out. You're actually trying to just brand yourself. You're trying to attract them to your brand um, in these uh, in these forums. But yeah, if anyone ha happy to share anything else, um, you can jump back to that slide. I had a list of the most common ones um, currently for for Gen Z, but there's there's lots lots of them. Okay, thank you. Anybody I was going to ask, yeah, Tony. Um, I was going to ask about the incentive for the referral on, I think there's um, confusion, uh, maybe not confusion, but not knowledge how to pay out on referrals to candidates. So whether they, I can see some businesses getting a little lost whether they should be paying cash or whether it should be in the form of a, I don't know, um, gift card or if there's a cap on it. I think there's just little knowledge about that. So that's why companies don't follow through. Well, I think it's more, Rory, the fact that well, ones I see are happy to offer it. They'll pay it as cash. They'll pay it as a gift card. They'll pay it anyway. But people okay. are not using it. I'm not seeing people. I'm not seeing them having to pay it. So it's not that they don't mm. want to or they don't know how. There's nobody referring anybody. So they're not paying. Or when they do offer a referral, they're doing it in a genuine sense because they really want to refer yeah. to a candidate or they want to help a friend. They're not doing The incentive is not the motivation for them to do it in a lot of cases. So I'm sort of saying turn that on the head then. What could motivate them? Maybe it is something, as I said, the most innovative one so far I've seen is, you know, a membership to an association. Maybe it's a training yeah. voucher. Maybe it's an Uber Eats, something more fun. Maybe, you know, like it, it's not the value actually. It's the recognition. And we'd probably all be the same right if I said to you Rory um, I, you know if you were and I were in a network and I said can you do you know anyone you know could you refer me for this and you and I as I said were connected you would do it because we were connected to each other it was our relationship that would make you do that not necessarily that I said to you I'll oh, come and I'll give you a hundred bucks or I'll give you 500 bucks for it you're more likely to do it because you want to just help out but if I then sent you something to say thank you you would go oh that's kind of cool that she said, thank you, I like that. So that's what I want you to turn those incentive pro. We put them out there and you're not paying them out. If someone disagrees with me, please say, but I don't see, I see how the, any agency is paying that money out because people aren't referring them. Oh, okay. So you're not saying that businesses are doing the wrong thing and not paying out referrals. Their no, referrals no. just aren't coming in. Correct. I'm saying it's not right. incentivizing anyone. It's not actually uh, working. Okay. And it's not actually gotcha. working yet, that's what I'm saying. So that's Have what I'm you... saying. Turn it on head then. Find out what would work and then use that. Yeah. Uh, I saw I saw a couple of um rec to recs that are saying that they are getting paid out on referrals, but when you see the way they're doing it, it's actually really simple. Whereas you see um some referral programs, they've got like terms of business and then you have to scroll down and read it all. It just seems a little bit too hard. And to be fair, I've I've been in that boat too. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you're right. Maybe simplifying could definitely work. So, very agree. good. Thanks, Adele. Uh, okay. Thanks. 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 Thanks for that, Rory. Hey, Adele, you've got a couple more here. Um, really quickly for those that can hang around just for a couple more minutes. Um, can you see the chat, Adele? Yeah. So, uh, TikTok is working because it's quick. Um, seven to 10 seconds, it's what our candidates are doing. Um, we need to review how long it's taking to deliver a key message through our content. Yeah, totally agree with that one. Um, people's attention spans are shortening every year. Social media is responsible for that. It's immediate gratification stuff we all want. Um, we all do it. We look at a video in the first few seconds, nah, scroll, scroll, right? It's got to grab our attention straight away in those first few seconds. So again, that's why I'm saying that down the barrel, you know, hi, I'm Adele from Career Lesu. I'm here to tell you about a job opportunity. You know, it's boring, right? Um, talk to people like you would talk to them in, in real life. So grab their attention or do something a bit fun and quirky um, to grab their attention. So totally agree with that. Um, incentives of interesting, we're seeing it in certain areas, but have some concerns about the messaging being interesting to see where it's been effective um, and the risks of this strategy. Um, 
uh, I, I'm happy to open that one up, but Sam, I don't, I don't see it as a great risk because I don't see it happening often enough. Um, so go out there and just do it. Um, somebody mentioned in a, you know, getting it as a thank you, as a reward rather than an incentive um, might be a better way to do it. But you want to tell people there's a motivate. You want to try and motivate people to do it. Um, that's what's, that's why you're offering it as an incentive and not just as a reward. Mm. Um, but yeah, the risk of it is, you know, pretty low. I think one of you paying it, but two of, of you know, I mean, what's the worst thing that happens? You pay, you, someone refers you someone, you pay out an incentive and it doesn't work out in the end, you know? I mean, it's most of us would just shrug that off and go, well, it's better that we're getting the referrals coming through for every, you know, bad one, there'll be 10 good ones. Thanks, Adele. We're seeing um, a little bit in actually um, incentivising the candidates to sign up in, in temporary space. And with, um, you know, so the risk, I suppose, is, if you pay out and then they <clears throat> don't stay with you for very long, don't work out the assignment, how long is the assignment? So it's just, yeah, very, in, there is more. We're seeing, I'm seeing a little bit more on the right. incentive side being put out there in temp world. Right. Um, mm, yeah. Right. So I think I, I love to hear that. that. That's really good news then and, and, keep, and keep encouraging that. Maybe think about stretching it out then. If yours is about creating a longevity to it, make the big yes. reward at the end, you know, just stretch it out a little, a mini reward at the start and the balance of that at the end or, you know, depends on the retention. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great to hear. No, very good. All right. Look, I think we might finish up, um, Adele. Just one more quick comment there from Dave Jackson, who said, uh, yeah, referrals, pick up the phone and thank people personally. That's the very least that should be done for sure. <laughs> Um, absolutely Dave totally right yeah we've lost some manners in that haven't we in terms of being so transactional I totally agree well it's a gift isn't it really all right look we better wrap up because everyone needs to get back into it and go actually find some candidates to place um yes. really well done Adele there was uh, so much content there as always thank you so much you were very very generous with your ideas and um hopefully there's tons of um good ideas for uh for our captain's table members and guests to uh to actually implement in their businesses and we will be sending a copy of the recording out uh with adele's contact details and uh, with a copy of the presentation so uh look thank you very much for all uh, all of you for being here today um we really appreciate it we've got a very very interesting speaker for you next month um we're going to be talking about uh skills involved in building a regional recruitment company and how those um, success secrets can be then uh, applied to big city recruitment as well. So um, watch this space. We've got a great speaker for you next month. And, uh, and as always, thank you again to all our supporters um, that you saw uh, on the introduction. Um, we'll send you their contact details in the follow-up with the presentation and the recording. So thank you very much, Adele. Thank you very much, everyone, for, uh, for being on uh, probably the, uh, the largest captain's table we've had this year. So uh, thanks all and uh, hope to see you next month. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you all.